Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is a series on diseases of immune system. This is the part one of diseases of immune system where we will discuss about innate immunity. So the learning objective of the entire series is that we will look into what normal immune response is. We will understand the concepts behind hypersensitivity reactions. We will look into various autoimmune diseases. We will study various immunodeficiency diseases and also the transplant rejections. Right? So, in this session, we will talk about the definition and various types of immunity. And we will discuss in detail about innate immunity, where we discuss components and receptors of innate immunity. So, to understand various diseases of immune system, we need to understand the normal immune response. So, what do you mean by immunity? Immunity, uh, you know, in a simpler terminology, it's just that it is protection from infectious pathogens. But it also includes protection or host reaction against cancers, which is referred to as tumor immunity. I have discussed in detail about tumor immunity in, of, in one of my earlier sessions. It can also be, you know, a host reaction against tissue implants or even self-antigen. If there is a host reaction against self-antigens, it is referred to as autoimmunity. So, immunity encompasses all these things. Right. So, basically immunity is further categorized into innate immunity and adaptive immunity. What is innate immunity? It's also referred to as natural or native immunity. So, innate immunity is all about understanding our body's intrinsic mechanisms. This is the one which reacts Im Im immediately and this is almost always the first line of defense against various pathogens. Whereas adaptive immunity, which is also referred to as acquired or specific immunity, it, it is nothing but it is stimulated or adapted, you know, to exposure to various microbes and foreign substances. This is a type of immunity which develops very slowly, but note that it is more powerful in combating infections as against innate immunity. So, you know that we have two types of immunity, right? One is innate or natural immunity. Another is acquired or adaptive immunity. See, the word immune response is most often used for adaptive immunity. Now, let us uh, see in detail or understand more about innate immunity. So, to understand more about innate immunity, we need to know what are the components of innate immunity and what are the various receptors involved in innate immunity. So, the components of innate immunity are the epithelium, the phagocytic cells, the dendritic cells, the innate lymphoid cells, plasma proteins and various other cells. Let us see each of these one by one. The first one is epithelium. The epithelium of the skin, the gastrointestinal tract, the respiratory tract, all these epithelia, they act either as mechanical barriers or they can act as antimicrobials too. So, how does they act as mechanical barrier? Because these are the cells, the epithelium, you know, they are held together by tight junctions. That's how they act as mechanical barriers and they are most often the first line of defense against pathogens. Now, how do they act as antimicrobial? That's by secretion of certain substances called defensins, right? These are the ones which can bind to various microbes and then they form pore-like surface defects and then they kill those microbes. So, remember, uh, epithelium can act either as mechanical barrier, which is the most common or uh, uh, the most important function and it can also act as antimicrobial. The second component of innate immunity are our phagocytic cells, right, which we have discussed in detail when I have talked about inflammation chapter, right. So, the phagocytic cells can be monocytes, the macrophages and the neutrophils. What do they do? They ingest, they phagocytose the microbes and then they destroy these microbes. And the dendritic cells, what are these cells? These are specialized cells which are present in the epithelium, they can be present in nymphoid organs and most other tissues as well. The most important function of dendritic cell is that they detect danger and that initiate immediate immune response, which is innate immune response. How do they do? They act either by, they, they act as antigen presenting cells. That's the most important function, the antigen 
presenting function and remember the dendritic cells they also have receptors which can detect microbes and the various damaged cellular components so what do they do what do they do in antigen presenting function they recognize antigen of various pathogens and then they present these antigens to t lymphocytes where t lymphocytes tackle those microbes so what do the receptors do these receptors they stimulate you know they help in stimulation and secretion of various cytokines and inflammatory mediators which can tackle these you know microbes so that's the role of dendritic cells now moving on to understanding innate lymphoid cells or ilcs what are these they are the lymphocytes which are resident which are which they which reside in the tissues that's why they are called as tissue resident lymphocytes the difference between these cells and the regular t lymphocytes is that the t cell antigen receptors in these cells are absent okay they don't respond to antigens but then how are they stimulated they are activated by the cytokines and mediators which are produced at the site of tissue damage okay so these innate lymphoid cells do not respond to antigens but they are activated by various cytokines upon activation what do they do they produce more and more cytokines and what are the cytokines which are produced it can be interferon gamma interleukin 5 13 4 17 22 and various other interleukins various other cytokines which act as defense mechanisms against various microbes right so what you should know about innate lymphoid cells is that they don't have t cell antigen receptors okay they can be activated only by the cytokines and mediators which are present at the site of tissue damage so one important innate uh, lymphoid cell which you should know is that the natural killer cell it's a type of ilc as i told you they recognize and destroy what do they destroy they destroy severely stressed out cells or even abnormal cells so that is where the function of natural killer cells is known where there is infection of cells by viruses okay so all the virus infected cells and the tumor cells which are abnormal cells they are recognized by the natural killer cells and then they are destroyed so that's again the first line of mechanisms of course tumors do know how to evade these kind of cells which we have talked in detail when i have explained tumor immunity now these natural killer cells they express cd16 and that is a receptor for immunoglobulin gfc tail that's the reason why these are the cells which can lyse only those cells which are igg coated target cells okay and this is also referred to as antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity okay again i'll talk about this when we uh, describe hypersensitivity reactions so this cytotoxicity is dependent upon the antibody what antibody is this immunoglobulin g okay so they recognized target cells which are coated by the igg and then they lyse these cells moving on to plasma proteins we know that the complement system right which consists of various plasma proteins that are activated by microbes and you you also have mannose binding lectin and c reactive proteins which are acute phase reactants they also coat microbes and they can promote phagocytosis there is a lung surfactant as an example which protects against inhaled inhaled microbes right that's about plasma proteins and what are the other cells the other cells which you should remember is the mast cells which produce lots and lots of mediators of inflammation the most important one being histamine right so that's about the components of innate immunity what are the components the epithelium the phagocytic cells the dendritic cells innate lymphoid cells plasma proteins and other cells now let's move on to understand what are the receptors involved right to to understand what receptors involved let us see these concepts one see all the pathogens are the damaged cell components so consider you have a pathogen or a microbe and consider you have a damaged cell components in the tissue damaged due to various reasons and these pathogens or damaged cell components they have molecular structures and these molecular structures are very consistent and they are recognizable easily 
and that's why these are known as patterns specific patterns what are these patterns the patterns can be patterns which are seen on the molecules of on the pathogens or they can be patterns of molecules produced during cell damage similarly they are labeled as pathogen associated molecular patterns paamp or damage associated molecular pattern so remember these are the two patterns which can be recognized okay one pattern on the pathogen another pattern on the damaged cells examples of pathogen associated molecular patterns it can be lipopolysaccharides on the outer membrane of bacilli particularly the gram negative bacilli uh, it can be flagellin from the bacterial flagella it can be unmethylated you know cpg dnas where in the bacterial or viral gmo genome these are patterns okay these are pathogen associated molecular patterns whereas dampis the examples are damaged cells when they are damaged you know they can release atp dna rna heat shock proteins all these are recognized these are again patterns damage associated molecular patterns okay so why i am talking about these two is because these are the patterns which are recognized by receptors that is what i was trying to explain right receptors and what are the receptors what are these receptors called as they are called as pattern recognition receptors right so that is an important component of innate immunity is to know various receptors and these receptors are pattern recognition receptors now let us see what are the examples of pattern re uh, recognition receptors they are classified based on the location it can be located on the plasma membrane or it can be trans membranous it can be located on the endosomes or it can be located in the cytoplasm right so the plasma membrane receptors they identify cell uh, they identify my microbes which are exterior endosomes are the ones which identify the ones which are ingested by these endosomes and the cytosolic are the ones which recognize cytoplasmic you know contents examples of plasma membrane receptors are tall like receptors c type lectin receptor g protein coupled receptors mannose receptors endosomes again tall like receptors are the only example for endosomal receptors cytosolic too important not like and rig like let us see each of these what are these tall like receptors as i told you they can be seen either on the plasma membrane or on the endosomes these are the trans membrane receptors and they are, they are the most well characterized pattern recognition receptors they are named after the original toll receptor which was found in the drosophila that's a fruit fly right? in mammals they have multiple you know toll like receptors around 10 of them okay what do they do they recognize various microbial molecules they are the ones which are involved in cytokine secretion lots and lots of cytokines are secreted and they are also involved in leukocyte activation just as of now remember that the toll like receptors they can be seen on the plasma membrane or they can be seen on endosomes they are involved in cytokine secretion and leukocyte activation the second important receptors on the plasma membrane are c type lectin receptors clrs they are found on the macrophages and the dendritic cells the role of clrs are you know they can detect fungal components fungi and that's why you know they are the ones which are involved in inflammatory responses against fungal infections the third one is a very common one which is g protein coupled receptors can be seen in all types of leukocytes which recognize bacterial peptides and these are the kind of receptors you know they help in chemotaxis chemotaxis means moving of these inflammatory cells towards the site of infection moving on to the mannose receptors they are the ones which bind as as it says it they bind to the sugars which are present on microbes and once they identify the sugar on the microbes they attach to those microbes and then they cause phagocytosis and destroy them now we talked about uh, you know endosomal receptor again that's a toll like receptor moving on to cytosolic important receptor what that's called nod like receptors they are seen within the cytoplasm 
they detect a variety of substances you know including microbial products but remember all these things should be present within the cytoplasm right and you know it also tells you that once they are expressed it says that you are looking at cellular damage or stress of a particular cell the most important function of nlr or the nodal like receptor is the formation of inflammasome okay it forms a it forms a structure called inflammasome which activates caspase 1 okay and this caspase 1 is very important in activating interleukin 1 and the interleukin 1 is the one which recruits leukocytes interleukin 1 is the one which induces fever so that is the role of nod like receptor now moving on to the next one called a rig like receptor which is named after the founding membrane the original membrane is rig1 that is retinoic acid inducible gene what do they do they recognize nucleic acids of various viruses which replicate in the cytoplasm of infected cells so virally infected cells you know the nucleic acid of these viruses are recognized by these rig like receptors what do they do once they are recognized once they recognize these nucleic acids they stimulate the production of antiviral cytokines and thereby these viruses are tackled and they also induce fever right so that is the function of rig like receptors right so with this we have talked about various uh, types of immunity innate and adaptive immunity i will describe in detail about adaptive immunity in the part two, two of you know disease of immune system we also looked into the various components and the receptors of innate immunity so that's all thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have any queries to ask don't forget to subscribe if you find this video useful and please do share if you think it's worth sharing thank you